Hey guys, welcome to Algorithms Conquered. This is the second video in the dynamic programming series. Today we'll be practicing what we learned in the last video and I'll be telling you about how you can compute dynamic programming solutions in a different way. So you can do it depending on what you feel comfortable with for the next problems. So the next video will also be dedicated to exploring another problem. And then after that, we'll start learning more theory about dynamic programming. So this problem is frog two from the educational dynamic programming contest by Art Coder. And in the last video, we saw frog one. So if you haven't seen it and you don't know what dynamic programming is, you should definitely go back to the last video. I'll leave a link to it down in the description below, but otherwise let's get started. So in this problem, we're told that we have a frog at stone one and we have n stones with each stone having a height. And so this frog has to reach stone n. And it can jump to any of the k stones in front of it. So we're given a variable k. And we're saying that if a frog is at a certain stone, let's say the frog is here, and k is equal to three, then the frog can jump over here, over here, or over here from this stone. And each stone has a height. So the cost of jumping from a st one stone to another stone, if this is the height of one and the height of the second one, then the cost is the absolute difference between their heights. Again, we can only jump to stones that are within k stones in front of us. So we have to find the minimum cost for the frog to jump from stone one to stone n. So this is the input format. We have n, k, and then the heights of the stones. And let's look at the sample input. So here n is equal to five, k is equal to three, and these are the heights of the stones. So the optimal path here would be from one to two to five. So you jump from one to two with a cost of 20 which is 10, the absolute difference between 10 and 30. And then you jump from two to five, which is 30 minus 20, which will be 10 and it gives you 30. I'm not going to be going all of the sample tests. If you want to, you can do that yourself. Of course, the problem will be in the description below. And a greedy approach will not work for this. Again, you can verify that by trying to do a greedy on the last sample input over here. But other than that, let's now quickly revise what we learned in the last video. So in any dynamic programming problem, there are essentially four main components. You have the parameters, state, base cases, and transitions. The parameters define your sub problems and they need to be very well defined so that you can uniquely transition between different states. And you'll understand what I mean by this in the next video, your state is a specific sub problem that you're trying to solve for. So basically, if you if your parameter is minimum cost to do something, and you're saying dp of i, then i is that state that particular sub problem you're solving for. So dp of five or dp of 20 are also states. Base cases are states that you already know the answer to. This is information you're usually already given or information you can deduce from the problem statement. And transitions how are how you, if you know the answer to a certain state, it's how you use that answer to come up with the answer for a new state. Or you can combine the answer to multiple states and try to come up with the answer to a new state. And that is why base cases are important because in dynamic programming to compute the answer for a state, you have to transition, but you can only transition if you know the answer to some state. So these are the four components of dynamic programming over here. And now let's just try to define our dynamic programming recurrence for this problem, frog two. And before we move further, I'd like you to remind you to subscribe to the channel because a lot of effort goes into the making of these videos. And you can also join the algorithms conquer discord community. The invite link will be in the description below. But we have a lot of members and I am online to answer any doubts you have. So I definitely encourage you to join. 
Okay, to come up with the state, the DP parameters and the transitions, we have to think in terms of the choices we can make. So we know that there are stones in this problem and we know that we are at a stone. So it's actually a good idea to start thinking about how we can represent the information of being at a stone. So let's define our state to be dp of i minimum cost to jump to stone i. Or well, this will actually be reach stone i because we may not be able to directly jump to it. So dp of i is the minimum cost to reach stone i. And we chose this parameter because the information we have is that we are at a certain stone and we can jump to more stones. Because we are dealing with the stones we are at, it's a good idea to store the cost to reach some stone. And you will get better at this by solving a lot of problems. It's going to be very difficult at first, but just keep on solving problems and you'll start seeing that you can kind of come up with parameters yourself and then eventually you will be able to come up with parameters yourself. So now we have our state, we have our parameters and let's try to define our base cases. And for easier problems, this you will be easily be able to deduce from the problem statement. So we're told over here that the frog is initially on stone one. And if our definition is minimum cost to reach stone i, it means that the answer for the state dp of zero, dp of one technically, is zero. Because we're told that the frog is already on stone one. So there is no cost to reach it. And the answer for it is zero. Because we have a base case, we can come up with transitions now. So let's consider any dp of i where i is greater than one. And how can we compute the answer to dp of i? Whenever you want to come up with transitions, you have to think in terms of the choices you have. And again, in easier problems, this is very straightforward. We're told that if the frog is on stone i, then we can jump to stone i plus one, i plus two, or up to i plus k. And this is the cost that we incur. So this is the only choice we have. We can only come to dp of i from the last k stones. So again, if I draw a small diagram, if you want to reach this stone and we can jump only k steps ahead and say k is equal to three, then that means we can reach this stone from this stone because, because this let, let this be i, this is i plus one, this is i plus two, and this is i plus three, so which means we can reach this stone from this stone. And this means that we can also reach the stone from this stone and this, but we can't reach this stone from this stone because i plus 3 will be over here and this will be i plus 4 but k is 3. But another way to look at this is that we're told that from stone i we can jump to i plus 1 to i plus 2 to i plus k. So if k is 3 and we're at this stone we can jump here, we can jump here, or we can jump here. Which means that from dp of i, we can update the dp values of any of these stones with, and let this be, let the index we jump to be j. Then we say that dp of j will be the minimum of itself. and the absolute differences between their heights, which is a cost function. So what we're doing is from dp of i, we're updating the states we can reach, and this is called push dp. 
the difference between this and what I showed you in the last video was that in, in the last problem, what we were doing is we were we were considering the stone we could reach. So this stone, for example, and we were going over the stones we could have been at to reach the stone. So from here, we were going back and seeing if we that uh, we were going back and seeing which stones we could have been at. And we were using those answers to update this answer. But now we are at a stone and we are updating the stones that we can reach. So this was called pull DP. And this is called push DP. And you can use either depending on what you feel comfortable with for a particular problem. Sometimes it's just easier to use one over the other in different problems. Not that it will ma matter a lot while we are still doing easier problems. But yeah, it's just something that you should know. Okay. So dp of j is equal to minimum of dp of j h of j minus h of i plus dp of i. I think I missed the dp of i when I wrote it up earlier. But yeah, we need this dp of i because we have to add to the cost we've already incurred. And this will be our transition. So essentially, if you're at a stone, and this is dp of i, let's say this is j, and this it, and the cost is dp of j here, then we can try to minimize dp of j using this recurrence. And we can do that for all stones because we know the base case, we know the answer of being at stone one. So what will the time complexity for this be? So we, we're already processing n stones. But for every stone, we can jump k stones ahead. So we're going to have a loop saying that from stone i, we can jump to stone j, which is any stone in the next k stones. And we're going to be trying to minimizing the value of dp of j. And I'll show you code for that and it'll become much more clearer. So the total complexity will be O of n into k, uh, which will be 10 to the power 7 and it'll easily pass. Okay, so this is the code for it. We're basically taking in n and k and then the heights of the stones. This is our dynamic programming parameter or definition. Minimum cost to each stone i. The base case is we are at the first stone, so the cost to each it is zero. And note that I'm using zero based indexing here. If you want to use one based indexing, this will become dp of one. So we're at stone zero initially. And we can jump to any stone within the next k stones of it. So this is the second loop. We're at i we go from i plus one to i plus k. And we can only jump to it if this is within the n stones that we have. So then dp of j is just you try to minimize its value with the value we already have, the cost we've already incurred, and the cost of jumping from i to j. And if we repeatedly do this, our answer will finally just be dp of n plus 1 or dp of n depending on 1 base or 0 base indexing, which is the minimum cost to reach stone n, according to our definition. And that's pretty much it for this video. So I'm not going to be doing the dynamic programming process myself because once I give you the recurrence, it's easy to do it yourself. And I think it'll just save us both some time. And yeah, thanks for watching. If you have any questions, make sure you join the Algorithms Conquer Discord server or you can leave your comments down in the comment section below. And like the video if you enjoyed and subscribe to the channel and press the bell icon to get updates about my uploads. And I'll see you in the next video. And in the next video, we'll be going over problem vacation from this educational DP contest. And after that, we'll be going into more theory.